In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As many of you know, I am into long-distance running. I love half marathons most of all, although last year I did do a full marathon for the first time. I'm really not a fast runner, but I've gotten to the point where I can run for a long time, and that feels like quite an accomplishment. Now, every now and then, my daughter will turn to me and she'll kind of wrinkle up her nose and say, Mommy, do you really like running? And I can understand why she asks me this, because running is really boring. It's more of a mental fitness thing than it is a physical fitness thing, because there's just no way around it. You get out there and all that you're doing is relentlessly putting one foot in front of another. And if you're signing up for some long distances, sometimes you get out there, let's face it, almost every time that I go out running, no matter how physically fit I am, I get out there and at least at some point along the way, all I can think about is how many kilometers are still in front of me left to go. It's easy when you're doing long distance running to get out there and to feel really stuck, to feel like you'd rather be doing just about anything else in the world. And yet, when she asks me whether I actually really do like running, I always say yes. And I'm always being honest when I say yes, because there is something about being intentionally stuck. There's something about taking an intentional step out of the ordinary, out of the, the relentless kind of normal of our ordinary lives, and putting ourselves in this situation where all we can see is the kilometers in front of us, and somehow that experience allows a different sort of freedom to open up. Somehow that running allows me to see the world differently, allows me to see myself differently, it allows me to learn, and it allows me to grow. Now tonight, as MJ already noted, tonight we begin a new sermon series, and I'm so excited that after a couple of years of COVID, we're bringing back the Advent Cafe sermon series. Our theme for the coming weeks is wilderness and hope. It's really important to say at the outset tonight, in our introductory night, that wilderness can take a lot of different forms. So I choose to run. I choose to press pause on my ordinary life, to strap on my shoes, and to get some kilometers under my belt. I choose to go to this different place mentally. It's not comfortable. It doesn't always feel good. But I also count it as one of the great blessings of my life to be able to do this. There are a lot of other ways that we can choose a sort of wilderness. We can choose to go on a silent retreat. We can choose to adopt disciplines like contemplation or meditation. We can choose to literally go into the wilderness. We can take trips into the wilderness to camp, to canoe, to travel, to have adventures. All of these choices can be ways in which we go outside of our comfort zones, do something that presses pause, that doesn't necessarily always feel good and can be challenging, but that allows us to refresh, to take stock, to recharge, and to recenter. It's important to say, though, that 
Wilderness is not always a choice. Sometimes it just happens. Losses can upend us. Traumas can turn our world upside down. A bad diagnosis can change our lives in a moment. A conversation with someone can flip everything that we thought that we knew on its head and, to, and force us to see things that we've never thought of before. COVID. Let's talk about the COVID wilderness for a moment. Because for almost two years, it's like we as a whole people have been in a time of wilderness. We've been forced, figuratively and literally, to be collectively stuck. We've been filled with uncertainty, fear. We've had the normal patterns of our living just dissolve in front of us. We've seen plans come and we've seen plans go. We've lived day to day not knowing what's going to happen and we've lived day to day as kind of a relentless groundhog day where every day kind of feels the same as the one before it. We've had this giant pause button pressed on life as we know it. We've experienced a lot of loss over the past couple of years. And I think some of this loss is going to take us a long time to calculate. But my goodness, I hope that we've also learned. I hope that we'll also look back on these past two years and we'll see that we see some things differently. That we see differently what matters and what needs to matter more. And we'll see differently what kind of world we want and need and are willing to invest in creating. We just heard our first passage, scripture passage, in this Wilderness and Hope sermon series. I selected it for tonight as kind of a beginning wilderness passage. It's right from the early chapters of the very first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis. And it's the verses that come right on the heels of the so-called fall. Adam and Eve have been blessed to live in the Garden of Eden, but they chose to eat from the forbidden tree, the tree with the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. And so they find themselves ousted from the Garden of Eden. It's pretty clear what they lose in being ousted from Eden. They had this beautiful, easy life where everything came naturally to them, where they didn't have a care in the world, and where they walked with this natural, easy intimacy with God. But we can also see what they gain in leaving Eden. Their eyes are opened to a whole new world. There is challenge ahead for them. There's hard work ahead for them. But there's also freedom. There's freedom to learn. There's freedom to see. There's freedom to understand. There's freedom to find their way to God. There's freedom to choose relationship with God. That's why I say it's the so-called fall because we often focus on the negative of this story. Adam and Eve disobeyed, and they lost everything. And the Bible is clear about the loss. But the Bible is also really clear that this is the beginning of a journey. And what we see throughout the Bible is that wilderness is a recurring theme. It keeps coming back. 
Sometimes we have descriptions of a literal wilderness. Sometimes we have a more metaphorical wilderness. Sometimes we see people choosing the wilderness, and sometimes we see that the wilderness is imposed. At every step of the way, the Bible never shies away from being honest about the difficulty, about the challenge, the fear, the tragedy that can be in the wilderness. But the Bible also insists that the wilderness is about growth, learning, and hope. Those are recurring themes in the wilderness, growth, learning, and hope. The Bible insists that no matter where we find ourselves, what difficult path we find ourselves on, God is there, and God will bless us. So in the coming weeks, we have 12 different voices that we're going to hear. We have 12 different scripture passages ahead of us. I know that we're going to have 12 really interesting and honest reflections on the wilderness that we see in Scripture and the wilderness that we experience in our own lives. Reflections about the challenge, the loss, the learnings, the blessing, and the God who's with us every step of the way if we just have eyes to see. So we can feel stuck, we can feel challenged, loss is real. The learning is real too. I hope in the coming weeks we can help each other learn, and I hope we can help each other perceive. The God who's with us every step of the way and never leaves us. Amen.